for quantifying, calculating. As you know, you want to calculate. We haven't busted out a calculator in a while. You guys are probably getting yes, antsy. We did? We did? Yeah, we All right, so, okay. All right, at least that. So, uh, what do we know about the change in entropy of the surroundings? Well, we just previously uh, learned that the change in entropy is inversely proportional to the temperature. All right. So our change in entropy of the surroundings is inversely proportional to the temperature. And then here we saw that for delta H, what's the relationship for delta H? If delta H is negative, my delta S is going to be positive. So they're proportional. One goes up, one goes not really inversely proportional. What happens is that the delta S for the surroundings is proportional to the negative of the delta H. So if uh, enthalpy is negative, the change in uh, entropy of the surrounding is going to be positive. It's going to go up if it's exothermic. If it's endothermic, change in entropy is going to go down. We're going to get a negative answer. All right, so what we do is we just combine these for our equation in that the end change in entropy for the surroundings is equal to the negative delta H of the reaction all over our temperature. And just so we don't change the sign, temperature for thermochemistry and thermodynamics is always going to be in Kelvin. But if we're doing an experiment in the laboratory, what do we usually measure uh, temperature in? Celsius. Celsius. So we're going to have to do that a couple more times. How do we convert between degrees Celsius and Kelvin? Plus 273. Good. 0.15 we're going to be a little bit more exact. All right. So let's use that equation and our knowledge of change in entropy for the system to take a look at example 17.2. But of course, first, we have to consider. All right, so consider the combustion of propane gas, C3AJ plus five oxygen produces three CO2s, four waters, and has an enthalpy of, change in enthalpy of negative 2044 kilojoules. Oh. I'll catch up to you. Give me time. Let's calculate the uh, change in entropy of the surroundings. So that, we're going to use our handy dandy equation we just developed. Negative delta H for the reaction all over our temperature. What's our enthalpy change? Negative 2044. All right, so we have to take the negative of that, so we've got to keep that in. All over temperature. What's our temperature? 25 Celsius plus 273. Oh, 25 plus 273, so we've got to add that 273.15. No decimals on the 25, so that's just going to give me 298. divided by 298 Kelvin. And what do we get? If we take negative of a negative 2044 and divided by 298, 626? 86. Oh, 6.86, sorry. 6.86, that's positive, right? And that's uh, kilojoules per Kelvin. Yeah, okay, so yep, now that's kill, uh, kilojoules and Kelvin on the bottom, so that's this. All right, so that's uh, the actual entropy change for the surroundings. For B, what we're going to want to do is just determine the sign for entropy change of the system. How are we going to do that? So we actually got to look, look at the... Uh, equation. Um, first thing to check is phases, see what's going on with the phases. So we're going from 
Well, so we're going from gases to gases, so no change in phase. Now what do we do? Coefficients, number of moles. So how many moles we got? Let's go one plus five, that's six. Two, three plus seven, four plus three, blah, blah, blah. Three plus four is seven. So we're going from six moles to seven moles. So what's going on with our entropy? Is it increasing or decreasing? Increasing. increasing. So what's going to be the change in entropy sign? Positive. So I don't know what it is yet, but it is going to be positive. Now C, we're going to combine that, those two pieces of information to determine the sign of entropy change for the universe. Okay, so all we're doing is uh, thinking about the sign. So I've got a positive, so delta S for the system, or universe, excuse me, will be system plus surroundings. The system, we, we calculated and we determined it was positive. And then for B, we determine that the system is also positive. And so even though we don't know the number, the actual value for our system, if you add two positive values, you're always going to get a positive number, right? So that's going to equal positive. So the change in entropy for the universe is positive. Now the last question there, uh, will the reaction be spontaneous? Basically you're asking there, are we following the second law of thermodynamics? Yes. Is the entropy of the universe increasing? Yes, yes. so that's going to happen. So the reaction would be spontaneous. Can we just, without doing the calculation, if we don't have that equation over there, and so ask, will the reaction? Uh, because the spon uh, so it was spontaneous because the change in entropy for the universe was positive, which follows the second law of thermodynamics.